Well, I'm sitting on my couch and I have a glass of wine, so I guess we both know what that means. It's time for another wine story time. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Brittany. If you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I normally talk about geeky things, but sometimes I tell you guys the stories about the reasons why I drink. And today is kind of another story about when I was in high school, but I wasn't actually in high school. I was in middle level, and I say in middle level because I went to the same school building from the time I was in kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So I came from a very small school. My graduating class was 96 people. It's fine. So I do need to give you guys a little bit of a background. Um, I know that I've mentioned this before on my channel, but I have a bad back, specifically my right shoulder, um, in like right behind the shoulder blade is bad. And it's been a lot better in recent years, I just don't have full rotation of that shoulder, which is unfortunate when you're a martial artist. Back when I was a teenager, it hurt almost all the time. It was not just chronic pain, it was like constant pain. And it was really, really hard to live with. It was very, very difficult. Most teachers understood that I had certain limitations, but the only teacher that mattered to understand that I had limitations was my gym teacher. And for the most part, most of the gym teachers did understand. So I heard it when I was like nine, 10 years old, right around there, I think it was like 10. I was being an invincible kid and learned I wasn't invincible and I hurt myself. I tore a muscle in my back and it, it's not great. It, it hurts pretty regularly still. I still have chronic pain in my back. Um, which because of the muscle leads to chronic pain in my neck as well. So it just, which eventually sometimes leads to a headache. So it's great. Essentially, um, I'm limited. And these days I, I've learned to live beyond my limitation, which is great. But back then I didn't live beyond my limitation. I just allowed myself to be limited. And like I said, most gym teachers understood this. However, there was this one that thought I was just being this overweight, chunky kid that just didn't want to do anything. Um, because I've always been a little more heavy set. When I left high school, I lost a ton of weight and I was at my thinnest when I was like 20, 21. That time period is when I was at my thinnest. But other than that, I've always been kind of a bigger kid. And that comes down to a couple of things. One, the 90s was one of the worst decades for children because we had so much bad food. We had Danimals. We had, you know, hot pocket launched. We had the pizza bagels. We had Sunny D. We had Lunchables. I mean, all these things still exist, but like they were huge when I was a kid back in the 90s. And Wonder Bread, you know, was a thing. And, what, and so like people didn't eat wheat bread. Like we all ate white bread. Like it just, it was bad. And I'm not going to sit there and say that I had a healthy lifestyle. I didn't. I ate frozen mini pancakes in the morning with a can of Mountain Dew. So not healthy. However, this particular gym teacher um, didn't understand it and refused to understand that I had these limitations. And so he worked me harder than actually any other kids in the school. And it was really, really tough. Um, so this is not part of the actual story, but I want to give you kind of a background. He just was always very um, abusive. And every year we had to run the mile. And I always walked the mile and it took me a full 20 minutes to do it. Um, but I mean like I was walking slowly because even now I can walk a mile and it doesn't take me 20 minutes so I was I, I was I was hurting but I you know I was also that's just it I was in pain a lot but it got to a point where he got really tired of me just walking and so he basically said that if I didn't run I would be given a behavioral check mark I just and and I was not okay with that. So I would run and it was really great because I did have some friends in that class that would kind of cheer me on. After one of the ones where I had to, I was forced to run beyond what I could actually accomplish running and my uh, friend helped me. He ran the last mile, or the last lap with me, cheering me on. He'd already finished, but he started running again just to cheer me on. And the rest of the class was kind of making fun of me because I, I'm slow. They called me Brittany Molasses because they're, you know, original people but I was feeling really sick afterwards. And I've got a couple of things. I'm hypoglycemic and sometimes extra activity is really tough, especially back then because I was not eating healthy. And so my blood sugar was just not managing itself well. I was in a lot of pain 
and I was out of shape. I was I was overweight. I was out of shape. I was not feeling my body the way I should be. I should have been feeling my body. So it was it was really bad. It was really unfortunate. And he ended up having to leave halfway through class. And so the substitute took us out after the mile, and we were playing kickball for the last however long it was. And I was out in the outfield, and all of a sudden, the next thing I knew was I was, was, I was on the ground. And I don't know what happened. Um, but I had I was on the ground I wasn't on the ground long like I wasn't out long maybe for a second or two because by the time I woke up like nobody had gotten to me just yet but my friend Christina had run to me the substitute teacher had run to me and a couple of other people in the outfield had run to me they're like we don't know what happened and I'm like I think I passed out and so the substitute teacher allowed Christina to take me to the nurse I kind of stuck around this nurse the nurse at my school was really great she had known me forever she knew a lot of my stuff um, I was I graduated with with her son Leif. We graduated high school together. We had known each other forever. We went to the same church. Like she just she knew me. She knew all my stuff. And so she just let me kind of sit and relax and wait. And I eventually went back to class, but I didn't go back to gym class because gym class was over by this point. Fast forward a year. So that was seventh grade. Plus I was going through a lot in seventh grade. Like I was just going through a lot. In seventh. seventh grade was a really dark year. <laughs> it was a really dark year. Fast forward to eighth grade, I get put back in this teacher's class and I'm not thrilled with it. My parents aren't thrilled with it. My mom isn't thrilled with it. My dad, I don't think, knew any of this, really. Uh, so I get into class and um, and we have to run the mile again. So we're fast forwarding like pretty much an entire year because we have to run the mile again. And he pulls me again and he goes, okay, no, you need to like actually run because if I don't see you running, you're going to get a behavioral check mark in your, in your assignment book. So when I was in school, what we had was we had these assignment books in, in middle, middle level, they were big, like notebook size, and then in high school, they were a little bit small, like journal size. If you acted out or did something wrong, you'd get a check mark in it, and um, if you got so many in a week, you got detention. If you got so many in a day, you got detention, and it kind of went off of that. And I was a goody two-shoes, so I rarely ever got checks in my book, and if I did, it was because of, like, I didn't turn an assignment in. <laughs> like that was that was it and so I ran and my friend Christina was in that gym class again with me and she ran right beside me the entire time because she was very concerned after what had happened the year before she was super concerned that I was gonna get hurt again we ran and ran and ran and I eventually finished the mile I think I finished the mile in like I don't know 15 minutes I have no idea I don't remember but we were still the last ones to finish the mile so after that we were all allowed to go in and get a drink of water and as we were going in, I was feeling that woozy feeling again. I was feeling really lightheaded. I was feeling sick to my stomach. I thought I was gonna throw up. Um, I felt my knees getting weak underneath me. And I was like, you know what, I can't do this. And I knew that if I'd gone out to talk to this gym teacher, he just would have, he wouldn't have let me go to the nurse. Um, so I turned to my friend Allie and I said, hey Allie, I'm gonna go to the nurse. I need to sit down, I'm having some issues. Can you tell the teacher? that we're, that I'm gonna go. And Christina goes, I'm gonna go with her. So I wanna make sure she gets there. I wasn't far from the nurse's office where we were at, but far enough that Christina just felt like it was important for her to come with me. And Allie goes, oh, of course, no, that's fine. Are you okay? And I said, no, I'm fine. I just wanna sit down and I know that this teacher's not gonna let me do that. He's not going to let me take care of myself. And so she goes, nope, that's fine. I'll let him know. And so we left. Christina and I left to go take me to the nurse. I got to the nurse and she was like, oh my gosh, you're not looking good. You're looking really, really pale. Why don't you go ahead and sit down? Um, I laid down on the bed, on one of the beds for a little while. And Christina's like, you know what? I just kind of want to stay here. Is that okay? I just want to make sure she's okay. And um, the nurse is like, no, that, that's absolutely fine. I wouldn't want her to be walking back to class by herself anyway. Um, I think she had some kind of like snacky foods in there because that's something that can definitely help if I'm having low blood sugar issues is just to eat something and I'll usually get my blood sugar back to normal and so that's what I did and um, after about 15 minutes or so I was feeling fine and we started heading back to class well we found our class we were playing like field hockey and so I went and found one of my classmates that was sitting down because we usually half the class would play and then the other half would sit and then they would switch and I found one of my classmates, and so we went and we hung out with them. And this classmate was not a friend of mine, mind you. This was just somebody who was like, I can't find the teacher. Here's one of my classmates. I'm going to sit with my classmate. And so 
we were sitting with this class with my classmate and couldn't find this teacher anywhere class is over we leave so I'm thinking okay nothing it's not a big deal whatever I'm sure he'll yell at me tomorrow because I have the audacity to go take care of myself because that's just who he kind of was so next day I got I get uh, to gym and I go into the locker room get changed into my gym clothes and come back out go into the high school gym because there were two gym classes going on at the same time one was taught by this teacher one was taught by another teacher and the other teacher taught in the middle gym um, which is what we call this we had the small gym the middle gym and the big gym because we were K through 12 um, so the small gym was for the elementary kids the middle gym was generally for the middle middle level and the big gym was usually for the high school we had two middle level gyms going at the same time one took one met in the high school gym, one met in the middle level gym. So the locker rooms were both attached to the middle level gym, and so I left her because that used to be the high school gym. And so then I walked out, went to the high school gym, and the second I get there, this teacher comes up to me and he goes, Hey, Alice, you need to go to the principal's office and get a truancy slip. And I said, What are you talking about getting a truancy slip? And he says, You skipped class. You skipped the rest of class yesterday after you ran the mile. You need to go and get a truancy slip and get that signed and you're going to be getting a behavioral check and i said i didn't skip class i went to the nurse didn't Allie tell you and he goes Allie told me nothing and Allie goes i told him that you were going to the nurse and he was not happy about it and i go and then i came back from the nurse and i was sitting with this other classmate and he goes um i was hanging out with that other classmate you were not there and even he comes up, he's like, dude, no, she came and sat with me in the in my group because she couldn't find you because you were off coaching the field hockey stuff going on. And he's like, well, you still need to go get a truancy slip because you skipped class. And so I went into the middle level gym. And now mind you, everybody knew that I was as good at two shoes. All the teachers, the administration, everybody knew I was as good at two shoes. I was never in trouble. So I get there to go to Bonnie, who's the secretary at the time of the middle level um, office and I tell her I need guess I need a truancy slip because I apparently I skipped class she's like what happened and I told her what had happened so she called the nurse and the nurse cooperated my story and I didn't realize that this teacher had followed me into the office he grabs my shoulder which mind you you're not supposed to do with students but he grabbed my shoulder and physically turned me around and got in my face and said you can say what you want but I know what you did This <laughs> made Bonnie so nervous. And um, she goes, she's not getting a truancy slip because the nurse cooperated her story that she was at the nurse's office. And even if she didn't come back to class, she was at the nurse's office that's not skipping class. So he just throws a fit and walks out the door. I'm like freaking out because I was just physically handled by a teacher. And I, that had never happened to me before. I know that is wrong. And Bonnie's even like, I can't believe he touched you. He's not supposed to touch you. And I was just freaking out. So my dad picks me up. This was a Friday. My dad picks me up from school that day. And so I get in the car with him and I'm telling him this whole story and he freaks out as well. But by the time we get to any point, because mind you, this is like the year 2000 or 2001. Let's see, what year was I? I don't know. It was 2000 or 2001. That was the school year that I was in eighth grade. Cell phones weren't exactly like... A usable product yet <laughs> I mean they were but they were expensive to use and so um, he had to wait till we got home and we didn't get home in time for him to call the school to talk to the principal himself little did we know that Bonnie had already gone and talked to the principal about this and oh my gosh I'm gonna say his name because I adore this man and I hope somehow some way he comes across his video because he saved me that year <laughs> I mean he, I'm gonna cry because he did he saved me um Mr. Arns, best principal I've ever had, hands down. Best one I've ever had. I had a sexist asshole who didn't believe me when somebody tried to kill me. That story time some other time, I suppose. Um, you know, and then the, the one I had in high school, he was fine, but he didn't, like, do anything amazing for me like this. But Mr. Arns basically worked the entire weekend to figure out how to save me from this situation. Um, because apparently... The nurse had already told him some stuff already. 
because this was his first year. We didn't have a middle school principal. We didn't have a middle level principal until my eighth grade year. So he was brand new. And so he didn't know about what, ha what had happened the year before. But I guess this nurse, um, Joyce, who, again, I've known forever. I was friends with her son. Still probably would be if we stayed in contact. We just haven't stayed in contact. She had already told him some stuff, and he worked basically all weekend to get the paperwork figured out for me to be able to, to not deal with him ever again. So I get to school on Monday, and I go to gym, and I am so nervous. I am so scared because I had to deal with him that whole day, and he was just a jerk to me the entire day, and I just knew that he was not going to let up this, this time. So I go into the locker room. I get changed. I come out of the locker room, and the other gym teacher walks up to me, and he goes, Hey, Alice, you're not going over there anymore. You will never have to worry about that gym teacher ever again. I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, you're in my class now. Apparently, he had already talked to the high school principal, Mr. Arns, had already talked to the high school principal about me entering high school next year and saying that she can never be in this man's class because he assaulted her is what I guess was said. You know, obviously, I mean, it wasn't like an aggressive grab. It was definitely a grab. It didn't leave any marks or anything. But he had grabbed me, and he shouldn't have. And the high school principal, of, you know, obliged that recommendation, and I never had him again. The only time I ever interacted with that gym teacher again was in ninth grade um, that following year. But it was because I was in Woods class, and I was making some stuff, and he was making a bed frame for his baby, for his kid. It was going from a crib into a bed and he would just come in during our class time because that was when he had available to do it and that was the only time after that day after that experience that's the only time he and i ever interacted again we'd seen each other because obviously we were at the same building all the time we would see each other but he never spoke to me again other than a couple of hellos um and how are you's in that woods class but we never really spoke ever again ever and um and i i've heard rumors about him um and other students and realized that i was actually a very lucky one and uh stuff like that but this is to that gym teacher you're one of the reasons why i drink let me know in the comments below if you guys have had any weird stories with teachers like this you know, I've had some kind of weird ones. I went to a very close knit school, a very small school, so there were a lot of weird things that happened. But let me know in the comments below if anything like this has ever happened to you. And until next time, I'll see you guys all next week when I'm gonna drink some more wine before then.